with you tonight on the program. We are going to uh, look at uh, le the legitimacy of the Bible. We're going to do this because, number one, our faith as Christians, many of you that watch, uh, needs to be uplifted. It needs to be strengthened, but it needs to be strengthened in the things of the truth, and it needs to be strengthened in the Word of God and the proving of that Word. That is what is so powerful and so necessary today, is that faith is established by proving or shoring up God's Word, and the Bible certainly is a book that can be tested, and it is a book that has come to pass in every detail, as the Lord said, every jot and every tittle of it, the crossing of every T, the dotting of every I. So not only for the believers to have your f faith encouraged and strengthened by the things that the Word of God has told us, but also at the same time for those who are not un are, are believers or those who may be agnostic that may come across the channels, as so many do, to show them that there's more to the Bible than what has been presented to you or you've allowed yourself to learn over the course of the years. I want us to pay some attention to some things that simply could not be, except to God in heaven ordained it to be. Number one, we're looking at modern times and modern time events. If you go back into the book of Daniel, you find in the book of Daniel that it is the book of the Old Testament. That is, to the Old Testament, what the book of Revelation is to the New Testament. And in fact, without the Old Testament, without the book of Daniel, and a good understanding of the book of Daniel. You can't understand the book of Revelation. It was the book of Revelation as we know it now pertaining to the last days and the end times that God gave to Daniel. I believe that. Daniel read the book and the things that was in it actually made him sick. But he could not understand what was written in it. He read it, but he couldn't understand it. And the Lord told him specifically that the book was for people of another time, for another generation, to take the book and to seal the book up. And it would be for another people at another time. Then, of course, as we come into the revealing of Revelation, the first series of Revelation Acts, revealing the book of Revelation, in uh, Revelation chapter 6, is that the seals were to be broken. Just as Daniel had been told to seal the book, the seals were now loosed. And one seal would be broken, and the Lord would read from that seal, and John would write it down. Then the second seal, and on it would go. So understanding things that were written as they are today is based, to the most part, upon technological advancements. That's why so many people who taught the Bible, who've done wonderful jobs, a wonderful job of doctrinally teaching and so many things throughout the Scripture, but they never really had, uh, you know, 40 years ago, 50 years ago, 60 years ago, 100 years ago, they did not have their hand on the revelation of the book of Revelation. They did not have the understanding of it. And the reason for that is is that revelation would be based upon technology. What we would refer to today as modern technology. The Bible told us again in the book of Daniel, speaking of the last days, that uh, two of the marked signs of the last days would be that people would be running to and fro. That, that means traveling, uh, such as with airplanes and things like this, you know, just a few hours from one side of the earth to the other. And that knowledge shall increase, the Bible said there would be an increasing of knowledge right toward the what would be classified as the latter-day prophecies. So the book of Revelation is a book that depends upon modern technology to interpret it. That's the reason why that the great men of God in the past who wrote commentaries pertaining to the Bible oftentimes got it wrong or now they're proven to be wrong in their commentaries about things that they thought because technology now reveals it to us. Now, with that said, let's go to one of the most popular passages of Scripture in the Bible. It is the passage of Scripture that deals with the mark of the beast, or it deals with the number 666. And the Scripture is clear, and the number is clear. The Bible forewarns us that the Antichrist system would come in the last days, and it would establish a world government, a world economy, 
and a one-world religion, a one-world government, a one-world economy, and a one-world religion. It goes to the point concerning the economy that there will be a mark given or a chip actually given. As you read the book of Revelation and break the words down, stigma, you'll see that it means etching, actually cutting something into you. And without that, written 2,000 years ago, without that thing being scratched in you or cut in you, placed in you, the Bible says that you would not be able to buy, sell, nor trade without it. It would be a worldwide economic system that would be based upon technologies that had nothing to do with paper currency, but something stuck in your hand. Okay? That was written 2,000 years ago. People who were still throwing rocks at each other and, and, and swords was the primary weapons. 2,000 years ago, John told us that there would be something cut into us in the last days. And as that would be in us, concerning a world economy, an economic system that no man would be able to buy, sell, nor trade without it. Let me read the passage of Scripture to you. It's found in Revelation chapter 13, verses 16 through 18. And it says this, And he causeth all, and this is the false prophet that does this, And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand and in their foreheads that no man might buy or sell save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number and the number is uh, the number of a man and the number is 600, three score and six. That's 666. Now we know today that the UPC barcode, the universal product code is framed in three sixes. Now, it does not sh show six, but the three long lines at the beginning, three long lines in the middle, and three long lines at the end are read by the computer as sixes. So the UPC barcode is framed in three sixes. Well, strange indeed. But it goes deeper than that. It goes much deeper than that. fact of the business is, the Bible telling us that this system would come about by technology placed in your hand cut in you. In 2007, one of the major uh, media outlets, news media outlets, uh, put together a program that in 2007 told us that 10 years down the road, we was going to be receiving these chips. More now of our special coverage here tonight, life in the U.S. in 10 years' time. By that time, there may be all kinds of new ways to safeguard and identify all those things that make each of us unique, our faces, even our fingerprints, even our eyes. Here now with more on the future of technology, NBC's Tom Costello. The year is 2017. You're rushed to a hospital, unconscious with no ID or medical history. But thanks to a microchip under your skin, it's all there. Science fiction 20 years ago, but a biometric reality today. The technology is based on answering one simple question. Am I who I say I am? And at the Jewel Osco grocery store in Chicago, some customers pay using their fingerprints. No paper or plastic. You don't really need anything other than your hand, and you already got that with you. Just 20 years ago, wasn't even a reality. Today, a biometric reality. Where did we hear this? In detail. We heard it from the Bible. Those that would be skeptics, how do you answer that? How do you deal with the fact that 2,000 years ago it was told to us that something would be scratched into us, that it would bear a number of which our UPC barcodes today bear, 666? How can we simply toss that away? You can't. In the book of Hebrews chapter 3 and chapter 4, this type of unbelief is properly marked as a heart, an evil heart of unbelief. The only way we can disbelieve the Bible after spending any time whatsoever looking at it is for there to be a heart inside us that simply won't believe it. You see the lady at the end 
All you need is your hand, and you've always got that with you. You see, this is the mark signs now of a generation that is the most scripturally illiterate generation in the world. Strange as it is, there are several reasons why Christianity is the religion being attacked. Not only is it for its moral codes and its preaching and teaching of morality without any force whatsoever. No Christian forces you to live this. No Christian forces you to dress this way uh, or, or look this way. No Christian does any of these things. But the moral message is preached with conviction. And the simple fact of the business is there's a great number of people that would rather side with a religion that will cut your head off if you don't do what they say than to rely and depend on or keep a religion who offers no violence whatsoever, Christianity. The simple fact of the business is as much of the world would rather risk having a physical bomb dropped on their head or physically having their heads cut off than they would to chance having their seared dead conscience awakened by truth. But there's more than just that behind the hatred of the Bible and the universal move to stamp out Christianity. The other move behind it is, strangely enough, this supposed archaic book that's uh, outdated. The modern economic system is in jeopardy. The whole world economic system. They want to bring in a cashless society. They want to bring in a chip technology. And it is the Bible that specifically marked it with the most well-known passage of Scripture in the entirety of the Bible and the most well-known number. And they can't make it happen without making America side and go. And listen, this is the first and the only generation of Americans that would have ever even tolerated a chip being placed in you. And did you know that on page 1004 of Barack Obama's Obamacare, that it was mandated that all who receive Obamacare would receive a chip? Even Harry Reid and Nancy Pelosi pulled it out of the bill, but it was there. And now you see a report from one of the largest, if not the largest, news media outlet back in 2007 telling us that by 2017, we would all have those chips. Now, he's not doing, Mr. Williams and the media and ABC and NBC is not doing that to, you know, sure up or prove the Bible. These are Bible rejectors. These are God haters. They do everything they can to diminish the Bible. And here they are doing exactly what the scripture said was going to be done telling us now that this chip, chip technology would be due by 2017. So as we look at what's taking place in the world today, one should easily recognize that we are in the last days and we need to live as though we are. Now the second thing that I want us to deal with on tonight's program is this. The Bible told us that in the last days, that man would become so barbaric, demon-possessed as a matter of fact, that inhumanity toward man would become so vile and so violent such as the world had never known. We had specifically seen in the Bible the passages of scriptures that forewarned us that what was going to happen to the Christians in the last days was that they would be beheaded. That is exactly what the Bible said was going to happen in the last day persecutions of Christians. In Revelation chapter 6, the fifth seal, I saw under the altars the souls of them slain for the word of God and the testimonies that they had. And in Revelation chapter 11, the two witnesses are killed and beheaded. The Bible tells us exactly the method that would be used by these barbarians in the last days seeking out Christians. But then the word of God even goes further and makes it even more clearer than that. The Bible spoke of us and Jesus warned that in that day they would put us out of synagogues and they would do all these vile things to us. 
And then he said that they would kill you, thinking that they did God's service. Now, we've already tapped into the economic system of the world and showed you how the Word of God precisely in detail told us exactly what was coming, and now it's here. Twenty years ago, the report I just played for you said it was not possible, but now it is a biometric reality. A chip being placed under your skin due to take place in 2017 according to the news program I just played for you and just showed you. Now the Bible tells us the mental set, the mindset against Christianity. Religiously, the world hates it. Religiously, the world would attack it. It's not Buddhism that's being sought out by these radical Muslims. When was the last time you heard of a Buddhist temple being raided and then being killed because they were Buddhist? Shintoism, Baha'ism, when, when, when did you hear of any of them being isolated and killed? It is only Christians. Nothing but Christians. And the Muslim tells you at the same time they same, serve the same God as the Christian. But it is only the Christian that is being wiped out by a group of, well, subhumans that say they are doing God's service. In the name of God, they are butchering. And it is exactly what Jesus told us was going to happen in the last days. Once again, how can we look at this and not readily accept the fact that whoever it was that put the Bible together <laughs> obviously knew what they were talking about and the fact that no other religious book in all the world deals in graphic detail with future events because they can't and remain credible because if anybody uh, puts the life or death of their writings or their theology on future events they're only asking to in just a matter of time have that philosophy or have that religion destroyed. These people today are not only butchering and murdering Christians, they are now, as you see, beating the tombstones to pieces of Christians. But it's no other religion. It's no other religion attacked. Now Christianity has to do with the morals of the world. Christianity has to do with the economic system of the world now, here, today. It has to do with the religions of the world. That's why the whole world is either killing Christians, removing Christianity, attacking it by media, attacking it from Hollywood, with the knives attacking it across the world through radical Islam. Why Christianity and it only? Because it is the only threat to the world system. Because the book is still as powerful, relevant, and alive today as it's ever been. And then finally, the Bible tells us and warns us of an apostasy that would come in the last days. An apostasy is something that takes place to the most part with believers as believers falls away but not only do they fall away in the sense of backsliding but they fall completely away. The Bible warned us that uh, in the book of Thessalonians that the Antichrist would not or could not come until there was a falling away first that in the last days the churches would give heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils that they would not endure sound doctrine, that they would heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. The Bible told us Antichrist could not come until there was a falling away of the church. One of the words that defines that falling away, a divorce, an apostasy. Now, today, 
Nothing could highlight this apostasy of which America has found itself in greater than the story I'm fixing to share with you. With a massive murdering of Christians around the world, as has been well documented, the American government, Barack Obama, stone cold silent. No push to stop it. No avenging their deaths. It has taken now a Russian communist who has stood up on the world stage and said this, Vladimir Putin, the Russian communist leader, said as to the Middle East and Christians, the situation is terrible. We have spoken about it many times, and we believe that the international community is not doing enough to protect the Christian population in the Middle East, Mr. Putin said. Now, my friend, what more does it take for you or for I to see? The reality of the prophecies, Israel becoming a nation. Again, 2,500 years, they were scattered. The world mocked and laughed that Israel is the last day signs, the Bible says. And there's not even an Israel in 1948, just like the Bible said. All these speculations and ideas of this, uh, uh, everybody having to receive a mark. What's that? You're going to have to have a tattoo on? No, no, no. The technology then comes along. The number 666, you believe in all that superstition and foolishness. And then all of a sudden, UPC barcode framed in three sixes. That there would be people in the last days butchering on wholesale numbers, Christians around the world, proclaiming they was doing it in the name of God. Not atheists stamping out God, but people who refer to themselves as godly people killing Christians in the name of God. Now we see that we live in a world, a Christian president of a Christian nation, silent to the butchering and the murdering of Christians. And it requires a communist, Russian, state religion, atheism, to look across the Middle East and say, this is terrible. And the international community should get together and do something about it. Not from the Christian nation of America. Not from the so-called Christian President Barack Obama. No. Letting the Christians and their babies be butchered. But a communist brings me to mind to this passage of Scripture of which the Lord Jesus spoke as he said this. In Matthew eleven twenty three, 23, And thou, Capernaum, which art exalted unto heaven, shall be brought down to hell. For if the mighty works which had been done in thee had been done in Sodom, it would have remained until this day. But I say unto you, that it shall be more tolerable for the land of Sodom in that day of judgment than for you. And so shall it be said pertaining to America. It will be more tolerable for Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for this country. Because Jesus said, had Sodom and Gomorrah received the light you received, speaking to Israel and Capernaum, they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. And there's no nation on earth that has ever received the light this nation received. So the judgment will be exceedingly great. You can believe that. And finally, in the book of Psalms, the Word of God reveals to us this very telling truth. And it is in Psalms 9, 17. The wicked shall be turned into hell and the nations that forget God. This nation has forgot God. The God that birthed it, the God that fed it, and the God that blessed it. Well, there really is no reason to disbelieve the Bible unless... It is because of an evil heart. Till the next time, God keep you and bless you. I love you in the Lord.
not have walked down that road I could not have carried such a heavy load I would not stand silent as they lied on me I would have fought back in Gethsemane I never would have drank that bitter cup And if they came for me I'd never give up Never would have drank that bitter cup. 